Good morning, and I'm on my way to Hong Kong for a few days, and I'm very excited. The weather is going to be much, much better than it was on my last trip. I've got some uh, great things planned, uh, interesting places to stay, and of course, let's not forget about Disneyland. I have always been kind of a theme park junkie, and back home in California, we would often go to California Adventure and Disneyland on a whim or for an evening. We had like season passes and stuff. Now, even uh, in later years, I kind of got, you know, sick of Disneyland because I would go often. It was the same rides. It was the crowds and everything, but it was still a lot of fun. And of course, the churros were fantastic. The food, the park staff, you know, there's, I have not been to a theme park anywhere in the world that is better than Disneyland. This is my first time going to a Disneyland park outside of Anaheim, though. But first, I've got to get to Hong Kong, which is going to take a couple of hours. So it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. I've got an 11 a.m. ferry from Zhongshan uh, Port. And then it's uh, got to get to my hotel. It's settled. I'm going to spend the evening kind of just uh, exploring that area of Hong Kong. It's going to be on the northern side of Kowloon. So I'm going to be away from the main city. Of course, with every new trip, you need to start your day with McDonald's. All right, this is my... Free bus to the ferry terminal. Well, the bus ride wasn't the most comfortable, but it was free, so no complaints. Just got through immigration and about to get on the boat. Everyone knows that I love historical hotels, the ones with character, and this one is definitely one of those. So with my trip to Hong Kong uh, this time, I'm staying at a place called the Hong Kong Heritage Lodge. It's a little outside of the city on the northern side of Kowloon Bay, and it's up on a hill and it's very quiet and peaceful. It's right next to some parks with some monkeys running around in it. But you can see, this is not your typical Hong Kong hotel. This is uh, a very old, reused property. In fact, it's well over 100 years old. It was originally a customs house for the port. It's also been a uh, hospital. Most recently, it was a hospital. It's been a quarantine area. It's been a prison. It's been a psychiatric ward. And a few years ago, they gutted the whole place, restored it to its original glory, and now it's a beautiful hotel. And this is on the upper side. There's three levels. The upper side is this. This is the lodge. And they have uh, beautiful rooms and suites here. Um, very nicely decorated, uh, but also very old. I mean, you're not going to get you know, brand new Ritz-Carlton and Four Seasons type accommodations here. But get this, the price for this, for this serenity in the middle of Hong Kong, I'm paying less than $50 a night, taxes, everything included. That's the cheapest hotel I've stayed in in Hong Kong. And the room is also the biggest. Each residential block has a little entrance area that looks like this. So you can hang on here, kind of like a living room. It's actually very quaint. It's got a really great smell. You can drink tea in the evenings. It's a, got a double-sized bed, not quite a queen, but it's soft and it's comfortable. The room smells very, very nice. It's got a little desk and a TV with some English uh, channels. And you can look out the window, you can see not much of a view, and that's okay. <laughs> And uh, then I come in here, I open this big heavy door and you've got this giant restroom. Now I've got the, um, the handicap uh, restroom. So it's designed for wheelchairs. Some of the other ones uh, in, the, uh, in the hotel are different, but this has got to be the smallest sink I have ever seen. And you've got the shower there. It's not the Ritz Carlton, but for what I'm paying for this place, you can't beat it. 
in all, I think it's the biggest hotel room I've ever stayed in in Hong Kong. And also, believe it or not, the cheapest. In addition to there being a hotel, on the second level, there is also a restaurant, which I'm going to go check out right now, uh, serving international flair. It's been rated very well. A lot of people have been commenting online that it's a very great restaurant in the area. And there's also an art gallery and an art academy here. That's what it's been converted to. It's named after uh, Zhao Sung Yi, I think that's how you pronounce it who was a professor and a scholar here in Hong Kong, very famous. Uh, I didn't know anything about him, of course, until I started researching this place. But uh, they have um, private tours, the free, of the grounds here. Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous, and like I said, you're in the middle of Hong Kong, but you're up on a hill away from the hustle and bustle of the streets. So even though there's an ambient noise of the highways down below, for the most part, I can hear birds chirping, and it's just peaceful here. They say there's over 1,000 trees on the property. And the property has all of these steps and, and walkways, and there's even elevators that will take you to and from the different sections of the, of the uh, property. I gotta say that was a great chicken sandwich something simple yet so delicious cost me about 10 bucks not bad